Welcome to Piano Video Lessons Unit 5. In this lesson, we'll be learning Piano Chording Level 1. You can click the info card at any time to come on over to pianovideolessons.com where you'll find all of the units from beginner and beyond, as well as the PDFs that accompany each unit. All of the video lessons are free. Today's lesson is lesson number 10, and we're going to be learning chord progressions. So this is video number 74 on YouTube, and it's part of Piano Chording Level 1, which is a standalone 16 lesson unit that will get you started playing piano chords and reading lead sheets. Chord progressions is um, a fancy name for chords that are played in a set order and then repeated. So here's a common chord progression that maybe many of you have heard or tried. This is the one, six, four, five chord progression. And many of you will call this heart and soul. So it's heart and soul. If we played in the key of C, if we're playing in the C major, uh, key of C major, we're just going to use the chords from the key of C. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we can take these chord progressions uh, through any key, but in this case, um, we're playing the C chord to the six chord, which is A minor, to the four chord, F major, to the five chord, G major. So if I just write that down here, I'm going to have played C to A minor, to F to G, because the one chord is the C chord, the six chord is the A minor chord, the four chord is the F major chord, and the five chord is the G major chord. So that progression turns to C, A minor, F major, and G. Now you could play this any way at all. You could even break it opposite. Yeah, to play C, A, F, G. You could use umpapas. to play heart and soul, but to play the progression on its own. So this is a standard chord progression. Now something fun to do with a progression is improvise the right hand over it. I'm just making up the right hand as I go. And you might like some of the notes or not, but if you use, if you stick to the melody notes for the key of C major, then you have um, mostly good sounding notes to go with any of those chords. Now we can also use another key. We could use the key of G. We could have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp for our key of G. And so we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and six and seven. Now the chord progression we said was chord number one. So we would have G to the sixth chord, which is E minor to the four chord, which is C major to the five chord, which is D major. So we can go ahead and play through this chord progression in the key of G. So we would have G, E, C major, D major, F sharp coming up. There it is. So now we have heart and soul, but we have it in the key of G. Now, if you're going to play along with a friend who knows how to play the uh, duet part of heart and soul, uh, you probably don't want to play this version unless they can quickly transpose their melody into the key of G. Um, when we play this one and improvise, we have to make sure that our right hand uses the F sharp. And we'll always finish on the one. Anytime we're playing a chord progression and we want to improvise, um, we will finish the whole repeating pattern of progression with the one chord, whatever key you're in. All right, so let's, uh, let's write the same progression again. Let's write it in the key of D. We've been using these three keys, uh, these three major keys already. It's bothering me that I didn't put the minors in here. I'm going to put E minor and D minor up here as well. So we're going to have the same order of chords and the same uh, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, 
diminished. Um, and so when we play the heart and soul progression in the key of D, we start with the one chord, which is D. We go to the six chord, which is B minor. Then we go to the four chord, which is G. And then we go to the five chord, which is A. So it's helpful for you to start remembering which chord is which number. Because if we're going to play a progression or transpose something, then we need to know which chord it is in the key. So this is the one to the six to the four to the five. D major, B minor, G major, A major. Then again, You can improvise but you have to make sure that you use the sharp of C and the sharp of F and end on the one chord. All right, so that's the three keys that we've been using already. Let's do another progression. Let's look at this pop progression that goes like this. And now this chord progression is everywhere in music. I'm a horrible singer, but I'll give you a sense of how this might be uh, in so many, so many songs. So we could have The Lion King. Can you feel? for the singing. I know it's horrible. I get comments all the time on YouTube about how bad my singing is. I'm aware of this. I'm okay with it. Uh, but again, sorry for your ears. So this one, five, six, four progression is going to be everywhere in songs you play. So why not get used to your fingers playing it? Most of the time we don't play pop music in the key of C. So we can, we can write it here in the key of C. We have one, five, six, Four. So C, G, A minor, F. A minor. Put the M there because I've got a lot of dashes. Let's do it in the key of G. So starting with the one chord, we're going to have G. Then the five chord, we're going to have D major. Then we're going to have the six chord, E minor. And then we're going to have the four chord, C major. So this progression then becomes one, five, six, four, G. obviously in any key at all, depending what the key is that you want to sing a piece of music in or what it's written in. And you could do this with um, your oom pa pa. Or you could do it with your one five eight. Any of these progressions work equally well. And then let's have a look at it in the key of D major. So in the key of D, we'd start with the one chord, which is D, then the five chord, which is A, moving to the six chord, which is B minor, and finally back to the, one, uh, to the four chord, which is G. So in the key of G, D, we would have D to A to B minor to G. You can hear that. You can hear your Lion King or your Let It Go or your singing in a smoky room. So those are all of the uh, the keys that we've been studying so far. And then let's look at this Pachelbel Canon progression. So in this progression, we have a long series of chords. The other two had just two chords. But in the Pachelbel Canon progression, we start with the one chord. Then we go to the five chord, just like in our last progression. Then we go to the six chord. Then we go to the three chord. This isn't one that we've used um, yet in these progressions. Back to four, back to one, back to four. Oh, I'm running out of room. And then back to and then on to five. So then this repeats. So we're gonna have C to G to A minor to E minor to F major to C. 
back to F, then on to G. So we could play this uh, like this. Got my right hand just playing root notes. And my left hand's playing the 1-5-8 pattern. I could make my 1-5-8 pattern more complicated. idea I can improvise now and then the pattern repeats or I end with my one chord so that is a, the Hockabell Canon progression in the key of C. The original key of this piece was D major. So let's write this chord progression out in D. So we have D to the five chord, which is A, to the six chord, which is B minor, to the three chord, which is F sharp minor, to the four chord, which is G, to the one chord, which is D, and then back to four, G, and then to five, a. So let's just give this a run through. We're going to have D major, A major, F minor, F sharp minor, G major, D major, G major again, and then A. And to finish, back to D. So we could improvise now over the key of D. You get the idea. So these progressions are really commonly used in music. So it's a really super idea to get familiar with them in lots of different keys. You could try this in another key here. Um, we're running out of time in this video today, but you get the idea. If you come back to tomorrow's lesson, I'm actually going to teach you the Pachelbel Canon in D using the chord progression that we've just learned and actually reading the melody from a lead sheet. So you're going to sound like a really great classical pianist at the end of lesson 11. So I hope this lesson was valuable for you. I'd love it if you could tell your friends about piano video lessons because uh, I think that lots of people are getting benefit from these lessons and I'm sure more people would love to know about it. So please check out the website and come on back for the next lesson. Thanks for watching.